What are we doing today, guys? Well, we are going to sharpen this ZT0640 from start to finish, do a complete sharpening on it. It has had a hollow regrind on it to thin the blade out, but the edge isn't great. We're going to take care of that. We're going to start sharpening here in just a second, and I'll make sure that I put links to all the stuff I use in the description below so you can purchase them if you need them. All right, guys, I am going to apologize for any background noise, but it's the first nice day we've had in a while, and I just wanted to be able to uh, have the garage door open. So I'm probably going to speed this up. So the stuff we're going to use today, we are going to use these doll strong sharpening stones that they sent me. Um, we're going to use the 400, the 1,000, and the 6,000 because they leave a really good finish. And uh, let me... Oops, knocking stuff off the workbench. And the Nagura stone they sent with me. We're also gonna be using this Atoma 120 plate. Uh, this is a very, very good tool to use when, you got, when you're setting a profile on some of your harder steels. And other than that, just some water, some baking soda and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and I will get these stones into soak right now. And then I will bring you guys back when we are ready to start. I'm gonna get a little bit of baking soda in this water too. Um, and then I'll explain the, the purpose behind the water, the baking soda in the water. All right, guys, while these stones are soaking, I want to address, I had a couple questions in a couple videos. So some people asked, what is this that I was rubbing on the stones? This is called a Nagura stone. This is a maintenance stone. It's used to help try and kind of keep the stone flat, but it also breaks down the sharpening, the water stone, and it allows you to build a slurry that forms in between the stone and the knife. And it just kind of doubles the overall cutting potential that you get from your stone. So a Nagura stone's an essential part when using water stones, what we're using today. And the other question was people were asking why I put the baking soda in the water. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. One, um, you, want, you, you want to be able to have some liquid. So I'm putting liquid on the stone um, which with one of these water stones is very important. And also with a diamond stone, it helps keep the diamond stone from building up uh, and loading up. Um, a lot of times I'll use a little bit of soapy water if I know there's no chance it's gonna rust. Um, but with a lot of the steels, you have to worry about a little bit of uh, rust starting to form on the stone, which is very bad for the stones. So baking soda drops the pH level down to a point where you're not going to have to worry about that. So these are the two items you guys asked a bunch of questions about. So you can use, I'm using baking soda today because um, I don't want there to be any rust and I'm going to have to reprofile this knife a lot. So the only non doll strong thing really we're using is just this um, diamond plate because I need the extra horsepower. It needs to be very aggressive. So I'll bring you back once these stones are completely soaked and we'll start sharpening this knife. Okay, guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the profile on this, and I am using an Atoma 120 diamond plate because it just has so much more horsepower. And like I said, I'm using just baking soda and water. It prevents the pH from... It prevents the, the rust that you get because of the pH levels. I need to go close that door. So... This is gonna be filmed in real time, but you guys aren't gonna see it in real time because it's just gonna be such a long video. Um, so like I said, this is a ZTO 640 and you can see that the edge on this was not great. I know who did the regrind. He does a really good job with regrinds, but edges are an issue. So, and the other thing about it, you're gonna have a thickening at the tip as you can already see because the hollow grind comes down, but it doesn't stay as consistent. So what we have to do is we're just gonna basically find that angle and I can thin this out material out on this edge a little bit as well to ex to maximize the cutting ability of this. So on these diamond plates, you just basically want to maintain a good surface contact and don't add any pressure. I'm using my finger as a guide. I'm not taking, I'm not pushing. I'm just allowing the stone to do the work. So as you can see, we're starting to remove the old scratch pattern. Once I form a burr on both sides, then we'll go. But you can see what I was saying about the tip. This is gonna take a little bit of work because there's a spot right there where the stone just isn't touching all the way because of the little hiccup at the tip of that grind. So let's go ahead, we'll get into this. 
The nice thing about freehand sharpening is I can focus on specific spots on the knife. Like the tip, I can spend a little bit more time working on that and then even that out and bring that all back together. You just wanna make sure you're making constant contact, the full length of the knife, and then make sure that you are flipping your knife and doing the same amount of work on both sides so that you keep a good consistent angle. And you can hear the change in the tone uh, once you've uh, removed the burr and stuff like that. So you'll be able to tell by the sound of that that you've got it. And you, you wanna look at it and make sure that your angles are consistent and stuff. Um, so uh, I think I'm gonna speed it up right here uh, and then uh, put some music to it and I'll bring you guys back in a few minutes when I get closer to the actual finish of this. Right, guys we're just about back there's only a little bit of that little hiccup at the very tip and then there is a small little amount of low spot here at the very heel it's almost imperceptible now but you can see how much like kind of wider this bevel is at the back than this so we're going to even that out a little bit but that's part of it is comes from the actual grind on the knife um, this was a freehand regrind, so there's going to be some minor inconsistencies, but we're going to try and marry it up as neatly as possible. But the important part is that the angle is consistent from side to side, regardless what the bevel looks like. Back to time lapse. <laughs>
Okay, guys, one of the most important things I could tell you is even if you know that your flaw is on one side of the blade versus the other, the big thing that you have to remember is you have to continue to work both sides evenly or you're going to have an inconsistent edge. If you spend too much time on one side versus the other, your angles are going to be inconsistent and it's going to take a lot of work to reestablish that good symmetrical tip and grind. So even though I know that this side needs a little bit more work at the tip and this one's pretty much done, I have to continue to work back and forth or I won't have a good even consistent sharpening. guys i'm pretty happy with where we're at off of the profiling stone we've got a nice even consistent tip that is symmetrical and a good edge and we formed the burr all the way down we got rid of a low spot here and we got rid of the low spot here at the heel so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to all of these stones which are going to be what we use to refine the edge. And when I say refine the edge, we're taking the really coarse scratch pattern off that 120 and bringing it down to first 400, then 1,000, and then 6,000, and then back out to the customer. So first thing we have to do is we have got to ensure that this stone has got none of the coarse steel. As you see, there's some black marks on this. We'll make sure that there's none of that coarse steel and nastiness off of the, you see all that black stuff, off of the reprofiling because I don't want that on there because it can cause some problems. So we're just gonna real quick, use this stone to take basically the top layer off of that stone and just rinse it away. And we're gonna rinse this off real good and then just onto the countertop. That's why I switched. I don't have my really fancy mat down is because this is a messy messy job it gets worse the coarser you go or the finer you go up in the stones so the next thing we're using water stones good water stones you want to build a slurry unlike diamond stones remember i was talking about the stones loading water stones don't do that water stones build a slurry on their surface and it just continues to cut and it actually cuts better the more slurry you have so if you could see there's a little bit of a white residue forming in that in that liquid, and that's going to be the slurry we want to cut with. So, you just make sure you keep your stone good and damp. You make sure you've got a little bit of extra moisture on there, and you just do the same thing on this stone that we did on this diamond stone, but, you know, it's just a different grit, and we should, at the end, have pretty good even scratch pattern these stones cut really 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 well uh, i am very impressed with these dull strung stones they're not just your average aluminum oxide they're actually corundum so corundum is a very very hard form of aluminum oxide harder than most aluminum oxide it's actually the main component or ingredient um, that makes up sapphires and rubies uh, which are for all intents and purposes, the second hardest surface 
on their second hardest substance on earth. So only beat by diamonds. So we're gonna do a couple passes on this. I like to say it's called, pa I, I call it passing the burr. Um, I form the burr on one side and then I'll form the same burr on the other side and just keep removing it back and forth and remove any fatigued metal and stuff like that. And then we'll do some, some final deburring strokes on this. Now there are some steels that these stones won't cut. There are some of those specialty, crazy, crazy component steels like Big Brown Bear uses, like, uh, um, what is it? Uh, S, no, not S1. It's um, Maximet and Rex 121. These stones are not going to do a good job with those materials because they have got carbides that are at around the same hardness as the stone itself, which means that you're not really doing anything. So, but the majority of your modern steels, these stones will do just fine. So I'm gonna wet the stone again real quick and I'm gonna do some, just some simple um, deburring passes, which are super, super light passes, no pressure. Uh, you can do them in a stropping stroke or you can do them this way. On my final strops, I, I will be doing the, the final stropping strokes, but all you're doing is just going one very, very light pass just to remove any burr that may have formed that you didn't correct. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it on your coarser stones. You can get away with not doing it, but on your more, up on your finer stones, you absolutely, absolutely have to do that because if a piece of the burr breaks off while you're sharpening and it's on your stone, you don't want that on your finer stones. And you will see that I'm not gonna put this back in the, in the basin with the other stones because I'm done using this for right now. Uh, I don't want grit contamination on the surface of these stones. So I'm really careful not to try and get, like I do put this stone back in, but I'm not too concerned about the amount of grit it's bringing. So what we're doing right now, same process, different stone. All we've done is we refined, we refined the really coarse edge off of this to a 400. Next, we're gonna refine that 400 to a thousand, and then we will take the 1000 and refine it down to a 6000 grit edge. And we should have a very, very fine edge fit for pretty much anything we would want to do with this. So let's go ahead and we'll build that slurry. So not only is that um, basically building the slurry, but it's also cleaning up the surface. So if there's any rough areas or anything that, that is inconsistent, it's gonna clean that up. And that way you've got a good, clean, fresh sharpening surface or s surface. So yeah, these stones work really well. This is M390 and these stones do a really, really good job on this. So let's go ahead. These stones are not as saturated as I would like. Um, typically they do a good job, but you can you just continue to add a little bit of moisture to the surface. 
And I think that the reason that they're not as saturated is I, I haven't sharpened in a while. And so the stones have sat and they've had more time to completely dry out than they did between the last time I used them and the, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like that, they've dried out a good bit more. So, all right, back to time-lapse with you guys. <laughs> Right, guys so now i'm just doing as before some little just deburring ultralight passes no pressure just to make sure i've got that burr knocked off all the way through um and that i've got a good clean edge so done on this stone we're going to go ahead and get the six thousand out and then we're going to strop some some other stuff All right, guys, so, uh, yeah, I moved my stone because I keep bumping my head on the camera. I apologize. So, yeah, we're on to our final stone. We will do a couple stropping strokes on stropping passes or burr removal passes on an ultrafine ceramic and then hit strops just to make sure all the burrs removed. We've got a very, very clean, consistent edge. You can see how fast these stones cut. There's already a black residue on this stone where it's, it's, it's just cutting into the metal. Um, these probably cut the best of any stones I've had in a very long time. Um, I'm gonna turn this because we've almost removed the scratch pattern just in that quick pass. This is the fastest cutting 6,000 grit stone I've, I've had in a very long time.
right, guys, there we are on that 6,000. We're just gonna do a couple stropping or uh, deburring passes. Really, really light. And then we're gonna go ahead. I will get out the stuff that we need to finish out the next steps. I'm gonna move these stones out of the way. Go ahead and get them rinsed off. Um, baking soda in this water in my basin and in the squirt bottle that I've been using. You want to remove that from your stones. So what I'm going to do is when we finish this video, I am going to take all this water off and I'm going to rinse everything out. And then I'm going to let those stones soak for about 30 or 40 minutes. I can't ever get this out of here. 30 or 40 minutes in fresh water to remove any of the baking soda that's soaked into the stones because it, as it dries up it crystallizes and you don't want um anything in your stones or on your stones that is not actually just the stone itself so we're gonna get everything taken care of i want to wash that stone off real good too barkeeper's friend on your diamond plates is the way to go so let's go ahead and get this out of the way so what i'm going to do first is i have an ultra fine ceramic stone here and we're just going to do a couple quick passes on that just to make sure that we've knocked off any burr. Always want to make sure that you wipe off your stones. Make sure that there's no grit. This is kept in a drawer with a bunch of other sharpening stones. And I don't want any of the big chunks of grit that may have come off the other stones to be on this because you'll get a scratch in your already done edge. And then you have to go back and figure out why you've got nicks and stuff like that. And typically it's just grit contamination. Now I did do a convex on this, even though I did it flat on the table, I didn't do the typical in my hand rocking the angle. I just simply did that same angle. If you were to look, this has got a very nice uh, uh, a convex edge on it uh, that you can definitely see the curvature of. So we're done on that. So next, next stop is going to be the leather part of this strop, which is fairly coarse. I have a coarse leather strop down below that I will use but you're, it's the tripod that the other camera is filming on is in the way. Now this has been loaded, but I am still going to use my other loaded strop for this. And all I'm doing is just making sure that any of the uh, burr that I formed in that completely gets removed so that it doesn't just up and break off and, and cause you problems with that. So now this feels very, very sharp. Um, Unloaded balsa. Just raw balsa. There's no diamond on this. And I'm just using any of the silicates that are in the wood that are in there naturally to just touch that edge up. And then the final passes are going to be on this balsa wood strop that's been loaded with gunny one micron and you just basically following with the micro serrations you just go tip to heel a couple times just to smooth out any inconsistencies and things in that edge and then we should be able to just grab a piece of newspaper and do an edge test i don't have newspaper but i definitely have a piece of phone book style paper and we can see very, very clean edge. Now, I'm not just doing that to test sharpness. When you have fine paper, like magazine paper, notebook paper, is not a good thing to use. Magazine paper, phone book paper, some of those thinner papers, you're gonna be able to definitely hear an inconsistency in your edge. But I don't hear that. It means we've got good, clean edge all the way up. Nice, nice edge. Run your thumbnail down like that. See if you feel any gritty areas where it might need just another little touch up. And you are good. So this knife sharpened from pretty dull to screaming sharp in 33 minutes. 
So and a lot of that time had to do with soaking and explaining and things like that. So guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but tell me why I can't change the content. If you want to support the channel, ton of affiliates. I will have links to everything you see here that I used in this video. I have, will, will have links to them in the description so you can purchase them if you need. I cannot tell you, it's not just because they sent me these. These are some of the best stones I have used. I have much more expensive stones that don't cut as well and they're, oh, hello, Crow. Um, they don't cut anywhere near as, near as well or consistently as these stones. That 6,000 grit cuts so fast, so clean. Yeah, yeah, we hear you. Uh, so, sick him, boy. Guys, that's it. I will see you all in the next video.